Okay, now we know how to solve uh, separable equations. Well, we may be able to solve separable PDEs, and I showed you an example. Now I'll talk about the solutions itself, and I'll talk about the superposition. And superposition is something that we're familiar with because we've been doing this um, in the higher order differential equations. So it's nothing that different. And I will do the same if, let's say, that u1, u2, and u's are like this. You know, what I'm talking about is one is u. Is this u u1 u2 and let's say that I have k solutions uk are solutions to homogeneous linear PDE did you see the conditions homogeneous linear PDE then my u will be equal to c1 u1 plus c2 u2 and I have all the way plus c k u k is also a solution okay again this is only applicable for homogeneous linear pds right so this is coming from linearity of it and you can write this a little bit more fancy if n is equal to 1 2k uh, i can write uh, c n u n right so that will be my superposition so we'll, we'll take advantage of this coming uh, down the road actually okay uh, but for now this will be sufficient for the superposition principle the next thing I want to talk about is the classification. This is a little bit more uh, involved. Let's look at the classification of PDEs. It's a little bit different than ODEs. Let's write it in here. Linear second order PDE. Okay. Um, and let me write it again. I had written before, but I need this now. Del square U del X square plus B del square U del X del Y plus c del square u del y square plus d del u del x plus e del u del y plus f times u will be equal to g non-homogeneous and in this classification i am talking only about the case where a b c etc are constants not functions it, it can be a function it can be still linear but I'm much more subset than that. I am looking at the case where A, B, C, D, etc. are uh, constants. Okay, and in order uh, for me to classify, I look at this way, so it, it will look uh, kind of familiar. That is uh, on purpose, so you know it will be easier. B square minus four AC. If it is larger than zero, and obviously it goes without saying, but this is B, this is A, this is C, right? So I don't look at these even. I only look A, B, and C, right? That will be sufficient second orders. So I will get myself hyperbolic. Interesting, you will see. I will give an example of hyperbolic coming up soon, right? Um, if this is equal to zero, I will call this parabolic. And if it is less than zero, I will call this elliptical. Okay? So, and this type of this particular classification of the PDE will be crucial to its behavior. You will see the solution will be very different from one another. And I'll give you an example, as you know already, there are no question about it. I'm a fluids guy, right? So I'm going to give you an example from fluid mechanics. Um, so del square phi, del x, del x square plus del square phi, del y square is equal to zero. So this is a potential, uh, not that important for our purposes, but this is a uh, velocity potential. And this m is Mach number. You may remember this, okay? And I'm sure you do remember this or heard about the Mach number, okay? It determines different rates such, such as subsonic, supersonic, and sonic. And in here I can get this u is the velocity, del phi del x, v is del phi del y. Okay, so these are some, some things from fluid mechanics. So in here now I look at the case, my a is 1 minus m square. Let me go up, I'll show you. Um, look here, a, whatever is multiplied by del square u del x square, which is u is phi in this particular case, it's this, right? I got myself b is 0, I'll show you that, and c is 1, okay? So you can see here, this is c, and I had 1 down there, and I didn't have this term, so b turns out to be um, 0, and I also have, uh, you know, d, e, f, and g, as it's homogeneous, is equal to 0 as well, okay? So now if I look at b squared minus 4ac, so that's going to be 0 minus 4a, that's it, c is 1. So let's say that m is less than 1, m is less than 1, and this actually has a name, it's called subsonic, ok, 
okay? In a subsonic regime, what happens is if m is less than 1, this value will be a positive, right? And then this negative, so I will get b squared minus 4ac will be less than 0. And as you remember, I call this elliptical. So my PDE in this particular case will be elliptical. And I have something called sonic, which means that velocity is equal to speed of sound, m is equal to 1, all right? And if I look at that case, let's take a look, m is equal to 1, what happens here? I got 0, right? Okay, interesting. So then my b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. And as you know here, what I said is, I have said that this is parabolic equation. And what happens if m is larger than 1? So you see here, if m is larger than 1, this number becomes a negative number, right? Negative, negative becomes positive. So I get myself b squared minus 4ac. Now is greater than zero and I call this hyperbolic okay so now you can see how the physics and mathematics come together in terms of this PDEs so you may have thought up to now that this is a PDE I'm, I'm solving a PDE in my fluid mechanics uh, lectures uh, and looking at this the behavior is completely different and if you look at from the physics perspective yes in reality things are extremely different when the regime is subsonic sonic versus supersonic I forgot to write supersonic let's write it supersonic okay so this pretty much sums up my uh, you know example so this is actually not the end but rather a beginning next I will introduce three different PDEs that I will solve and you will see that one of them will be elliptical one of them will be parabolic one of them will be hyperbolic as well and they are very commonly used in various different courses that you may be taking as mechanical engineers okay I'll be back with that. Thank you for watching this segment.